Over the years, Religious Sisters of Charity have had quite a presence here in Southern California. And over the years, our ministries have evolved. We began as teachers in Catholic schools and nurses in a convalescent home. But today, you can meet a Religious Sister of Charity, whether we're in the school, on the street, in a hospice, in a counseling center, wherever we are, we hope to bring the compassion of Christ to people. Today we're doing a project down on Skid Row. Um, we started this just at the end of last year. It's our Matthew 25 project. Um, I was inspired to, to start this project after um, being on Skid Row and um, helping a former youth and um, just seeing the, the extent of the poverty and the people living there, um, I felt we could do something here. And even though everyone here is homeless and living in a homeless shelter, we still can reach out to other people who are worse off than we are. I've known Miss Sister Margaret for about a month and a half since I've been here. She, is, she does a lot of stuff to help everybody and the homeless people because I know what it's like to be homeless too, so. Um, I think we need more people like Sister Margaret in the world. Uh, she's an inspiration and she's a very positive person. She's really helped me a lot spiritually. Um, I got back in church, got baptized, became a member of Hope Lutheran Church, uh, a member in their choir, all because of Sister Margaret. She's helped me in every way possible, and um, she's the, like the mother that I've never had. I feel this is really what Mary Aikenhead would, have, would want to do and would, would, would be doing um, if she was here today. Since I came here almost three months ago, I've noticed how um, the great love that the sisters have for Mary Aikenhead and how they make her known and encourage devotion to her. And in the midst of all the variety of nationalities and cultures here, this seemed to have a tremendous amount of expressions of our charism. And uh, I see my ministry at the moment anyway as working with the team and trying to create spaces where we can be together, all the Sisters of the Region, uh, respond or continue to respond to the call of our chapter and of the LCWR here in the United States. 88 years now, so it's time for me to, <laughs> I think, to sit back and, you know, but what I'm most grateful of all is my time with the Lord. I go down to Christian Care, which is a long way down, once a week, just to continue my help with the poor. It gives me life and I, I love people. Last year, I was asked to come to this house to help with the um, sisters who were retiring and um, needed a little bit more care. So we, Sister Una and I came a year ago in February and Mary joined us in April. After my profession, I was sent to a, a housing court for Sister Mary and I was working with women who were kind of off the street and they came in and they were given shelter and, were, and many of them would be just be on this but they'd be quite happy to be there and been taken care of. So that's the work I was doing and I loved it. I just said, well, I, I, I don't, I'd like to serve the poor, I don't know how, but I'll go and whatever I'm asked to do, I'll do. Normally you take three vows, we took four vows. The fourth of all was to serve the poor. It's a blessing for me to be here with them. I feel very close to them and to the congregation. Every, they are very, very special sisters. I hear the story of Mary, Mary Eckenhead and I am reading a little bit. I hear that she was sick part of her life. So I think she knows what it is to be sick and getting older and needing of care. So I'm sure she would like to have the best care for her sisters. And I just ask her every morning to help me to provide that care for the sisters. Well, being here has been such a tremendous blessing in my life and um, the affirmation from my other sisters and the empowerment they have given me from coming to join them. And they're a wonderful group of women, so devoted and so inspiring 
to me uh, throughout my 30 years here. I'm sort of the adult faith formator in the parish. I direct the RCIA programs. I in service the teachers, give little retreats, started a new bereavement group. So I have four women now in bereavement. So I have been with them 27 years. And it's a home hospice, so we go into people's homes. Started as um, working as an RN for about 10 years, and then after that, I uh, became the chaplain. And I feel very privileged to be a chaplain because you hear some wonderful stories. You see people working out old issues, uh, forgiving each other, and work with people of all different cultures, all different religions, all different socioeconomic groups. It's been a wonderful experience opportunity for growth. I can see I've changed a lot. I've learned a lot from people. And I see my journey a couple of steps behind them, but walking this journey with them and helping them to um, live while they're dying. Working with the sisters and priests who have come into the country, um, I also feel that through them, uh, my, my gifts are being passed on to uh, them and to other people. They are also helping the poor people and helping um, spiritually as well as materially by um, guiding them closer to God. There I am 40 years later. I'm still at Los Padrinos. So, so I had to organize the volunteer program and uh, start my whole program of sacramental preparation. I have approximately 150 volunteers at the moment. So we do a service every Sunday. We have Mass followed by Bible study. And I would also like to see them praying in church for prisoners. You know, we have the largest prison population in the world, two and a half million prisoners, and the majority of them are black and Mexican. So we're considered to be very racial in the way we put people in prison. Since I retired, I'm working in the parish with the sick and the elderly and the poor. And uh, people enable me at Thanksgiving time, the scouts collect food for me and I'm able to give that to a lot of uh, people. And then I'm in uh, People for Others, which is an older group we meet once a month and we bring them from the nursing homes. I'm also in Respect Life, which is against abortion and sometimes we have 40 days of fasting and then we say the rosary down opposite the abortion mill on Long Beach Boulevard and so far this year we have saved 32 babies. I'm also in Vincent de Paul which we meet twice a month and um, we have a lot a lot of very poor people there sometimes they're living in their car so people know me I'm jack of all trades so they give me clothes and food and whatever I get. And my desire was to save the world, change the world. That was my dream at a time. And so I thought, well, what can I do in, in the community that will make a difference? I was the first sister of charity to work with the Latino community. So uh, my name is Una. And so I was told by the people that, oh, you're number one, you're sister one. So this, this was so, much, so encouraging to, from the people how much they accepted me from the beginning. And uh, so I worked out of the church at the time and the pastor was kind enough to provide a little facility across the street. But it was a place, it was a start. And um, uh, we began working there with the people, with the Latino community, though many of them didn't speak that much English, but it didn't matter. And um, the board was very successful in helping me um, move from the little location in the city of San Fernando to where we are today. And, and that was monumental, to be moving from a small facility to something that was three times larger. And I became part of the group with my mom. My mom is a associate of the Sisters of Charity. And uh, she used to be a board member here at the Valley Family Center. 
and I came on board but didn't want to be a board member. I didn't want to do that. I like to work with the children. It's just amazing the work they do here. And when I ran into the sisters, I, I fell into a place where I found my mission outside of being a mom with two children. I found a place where I could return to everything that God had given me back like Mary Aiken had did with the marginal in um, her time. I felt that it was my duty, my calling, my time to serve back, to give back to God that which God had always given to us. So we started the Learning Center in 1997 and we've, I've been working with that ever since and we've had tremendous success with it. The kids love it coming here and um, it's just a joy to see them and it's particularly encouraging to see them really improve in their work. So I'm working part-time, I'm a member of the board and uh, I love what I do. I've had a wonderful, wonderful life of ministry as you can probably see. I've had so many opportunities, it's just incredible. Um, it's been great working here at Valley Family Center. I really love the way that, uh, the work that I do here. I really enjoy uh, seeing those clients that do come in with that heavy heart, with that, you know, um, a lot of struggles in their life and little by little seeing that process of growth and how at the end of the groups or individual therapy, they're able to um, have a sense of self and um, uh, increase their self-esteem. Thank you, sister, for helping me. Now I could do my homework more faster than I usually do. Well, I think just by their name, Sisters of Charity, I think that's the one thing that sticks out for me is that I think they try to spread that charity among other people. And hopefully it's still something that uh, exists here, that there's an atmosphere of welcome, of charity uh, towards other people. So my hope would be that whoever takes this into the future, Gary Bessler at the moment is wonderful, and whoever moves in after him, that they will continue to keep this vision as the key element in Valley Family Centre. Yes, I've been teaching since 1956, but this, my last ministry is in Notre Dame High School, where I've been for the last 35 years. I go back for the last two years, I've gone back uh, three days a week to volunteer. A lot of, of students have problems, have lots of problems from home, and have a grade, a passing grade. Some are passing grades, some are personal passing grade. But then I was fortunate in the last several years to teach honors. So that was, uh, I felt that I challenged in the beginning. But then I felt that, that I could challenge them too. So it was, it was great. The teaching honors was, was a great help in the last several years. Ever since the year 2000, I've been working with the homeless. I work with them every Saturday. We have hot meals for them, toiletries, try to help them to get jobs. Um, I would say, in essence, it's really to help them restore their dignity. So that's one thing that is uh, that's very close to my heart because I think it's very close to the heart of Mary Aikenet and it gives me great joy and great energy. I'm also working with the RCIA, the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults. And I love that ministry. Um, I find it very life-giving also. Uh, I learn more from them, believe you me, than they learn from me. And um, I have this year who are coming into the church at Easter. We have a new life team that are very much part of our school and so on who are learning more about the charism of Mary Aikenhead. So when she invited us to join the new life group, uh, Portia and I and a couple of others were very quick to say yes and we've been there ever since. We meet together, we pray together, sing together and uh, basically we're trying to be leaven in the community, but maybe our prayers can be something that will help or encourage other people to join the Religious Sisters of Charity. In our
Oh, the compassion I see them giving to people is an example for me. You know, they speak for I cannot. I know I don't know whose sister I cannot hears, but I see them in the eyes of the uh, nuns who are working, who have come after her, and um, I can see the spirit flowing through them to us. I'm in adult faith formation and uh, when I first came I was doing bringing speakers in for various topics, spiritual topics and having uh, a mission and uh, having Bible study and working with the greeters in the parish. But then it evolved and I added on the idea of house to house ministry and uh, a parish lending library and human trafficking awareness committee and uh, now I most recently I also once a month meet with our local Vincent de Paul. We continued to do our human trafficking ministry. Currently we are supporting three homes with women that are, are human traffic survivors. There are also women that are abused and women who have cancer. We learned that if you have cancer, you can't live on the street. They will not administer any type of chemotherapy. My expectations would always be that more people in the parish would get involved. I am so happy to have the opportunity and the help to reach out and uh, bring the message of Jesus, which is the message of Mary Aitkenhead, to other people. I've had to reach out more because of the aging process. Uh, it's been becoming more difficult for them to do some of the uh, accounting processes. And so I, I have picked up on some of those and, and I'm helping them with it or doing it for them. But they're doing the uh, reporting to me and they're getting very good at it. Um, so it's just listening in and offering to make it easier for them um, so it's not so bad. But um, I think everybody has to, to learn how to, to be gentle and patient with the process that it's not always easy because when you're dealing with money matters, it, it can be a very touchy subject. <laughs> Having worked in Los Angeles for 20 years, with an all-immigrant population in the school where I was working, I really got to see that the, the terrible needs of the poor, uh, especially those who are undocumented, of which there were many. So I think, I look around the region, having been regional for six years, I look around the region and I see sisters who see needs. And I think the only frustration we've experienced is the fact that many times we simply can't reach as much as we would like to reach. So um, my hope at the end of my year is that I will be able to reach another segment of the poor. One thing I love about Mary Aikenhead is her courage to get out of the convent and out to the neighborhood. So my current ministry of human trafficking gives me the freedom to be where people are. Last night I was interviewing a survivor of trafficking and one of my most powerful memories is walking down Long Beach Boulevard during a protest and shouting, our children are not for sale. We went to the very track where they are selling our children. And that's where Mary Aikenhead would be. I love that our ministry keeps evolving and that we're asked to be creative and to go to the edges, to the margins, to where people are not being attended to. And we know years ago we did that with the HIV crisis and now we're doing it with victims of human trafficking. So I love Mary Aikenhead's spirit of taking a risk and getting out there and the fact that she was with the people. She had a sense of the dignity of each human being. In fact, she called the poor God's nobility. And I love that each person I've met that's been trafficked, no matter what she's gone through, I see in her the dignity that God gave her. For the past 14 years, I've been a religious services coordinator at Holy Cross Cemetery in Culver City, which basically meant I 
met with families who had lost a loved one and helped them prepare the liturgy or helped them in any way I possibly could. But I retired at the end of June, but I don't plan on sitting in a rocking chair for the rest of my life. Um, I'm going to do bereavement ministry in a local parish. Teaching the handicapped people what was very meaningful for me. You felt you were doing something and you saw great progress, uh, very, very slow, but for them it was great progress. After uh, finishing teaching, I was asked to go to a Mary Crest Manor uh, skilled nursing facility. Well, I did the religious services and, and that with them, you know, and went around and visited them, you see. It was joined with the social service. I found that extraordinarily fulfilling, beautiful. To be with the people when they were sick and dying well, it was something very beautiful. Um, I would say that was what I liked best. At present, I'm uh, working in adult faith formation ministry in a parish, and that ministry is very um, close to Mary Aikenhead's heart too, because she always um, insisted that um, people be educated in their faith. I have about 12 or 15 people on the team, and they do different phases, especially with the RCIA. You know, we, we do the um, program for people who want to become Catholic. Uh, currently, I'm the Director of Religious Education for the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, and I've been doing that for 28 years. I love to teach, and I love to uh, direct and lead, and so the empowerment and the enablement of our lay ministers is the focus of our office, about transforming lives, and so that has been a wonderful gift to me throughout the years. And of course, we have a wonderful Religious Education Congress every year, and that is a, a wonderful experience of Church International because we have every state within the United States participate in this Congress, all except one, and about 15 countries internationally. We are women, we are daughters of Mary Aikenhead, and that shapes the presence that we are to the people of Southern California. Christ urges us to serve the poor, the blessed of the Lord, and welcome through our open door the blessed of the Lord. In loving the people the world would ignore, we glorify the Lord by our lives. to serve, to heal and bless as servants of the Lord. Our knees shall bow, our tongues confess as servants of the Lord. When we meet God's will for the world with our yes, we glory.